So here's the lineup here. We're in the feller buncher and log loader section. And have some old timber jacks here. It's like to be 90 zero machines. Definitely have been well used. Got broken grouser pads. These three here are the self-leveling models. That's quite the uh, M56, I can barely reach the top of that. So that's quite the uh, step up there. So. so if you've been curious about the self-leveling function on one of these uh, feller bunchers, there are two hydraulic cylinders right there. Lift up and that's what uh, lifts, lowers, tilts, and turns your turntable. As you can see, this thing's got a pretty good slope to it. It's pretty impressive from the cab how you control it. So let's go in here and uh, try it out. newer model so all computer controlled so you have to acknowledge it put your arm control down and then here are your controls right there so the buttons right there on my left joystick if I hit number four the whole cab should tilt I'm just have to turn on the hydraulics Hydraulics are enabled, so I'm going to hit this little button on my joystick, and this whole thing should come off the ground. And you have your inclometer right there, so that tells you if I'm tilted forward, backwards, side to side. So if I hit the button number three, you'll see right here. They just tilted the whole chassis. Alright, here we're zeroed out. This thing is going as slow as it can because if you look to the right and the left of me, I have two other excavators here that I did not want to smash into, so I'm being very careful with that. And that's what does the cutting right there, it's a giant disc. And to turn that on, we hit this guy right here, and that starts spinning up. So we're going to turn that back off. So I don't want to get that thing spinning all the way up just because I don't know the history of this machine and that thing's going to take forever to spin down. So that's a lot of uh, rotating mass in there. And that's actually what does the cutting is that thing's several hundred pounds and not over a thousand pounds and that is going to be shoved into the tree and there's so much rotating mass in there that those carbide blades are going to go right through whatever you're cutting down. So pretty neat technology. That thing's still spinning, so we gotta be mindful not to dug it into the ground. But we're gonna lower everything down. Where my finger getting in the way here? We're just gonna track forward here with this.
part before. Let's take a look, see if our blade spill spinning here. It's slowed down for the most part. You can just see it just gently turning down. So we're going to heal it up. And shut this thing off. Just like that. Pretty impressive design. And this thing's pretty heavy duty. Those doors mean business. As you can see right there, this is some pretty thick plexiglass, and something bulged that in right there. So I don't know what uh, what happened there, but it was pretty violent. So that's the operator's cab on one of these things. I have a four-point harness here. Pretty impressive setup. So this is definitely a newer machine, but yeah. Take a lot of skill to be good at running one of these, especially on the side of a hill when you're tipping and tilting. So we're gonna hop in here and try this guy out. This is a 2154D John Deere. This is a just a log loader, probably early 2000s. And Intel, it's definitely had some wear on it, has some hours. <clears throat> a couple of little fun facts. The John Deere's, or just any loader for that matter, um, the Canadian market versus the U.S. market. Uh, the Canadian market actually has rear entry doors are more common and more prevalent up there, where the U.S. market has the side entry with the tall ladder there and then going right up to the door. And this style of clamp and thumb there, that is a, you don't see that as much in the U.S. or in Canada, that's more of a U.S. design. I'll see if I can find any here that have the more traditional Canadian models. So let's go in there and check that thing out. That's the beauty of going to these auctions. You can get any things and try them out. You gotta be careful how far you swing left or right because you have a whole bunch of equipment parked pretty tight quarters. So if I swing over, I'm gonna hit that counterweight of that uh, processor right there. So we can turn them on, you can travel it. Travel it back. For some reason the uh, thumbs or the grapple doesn't close, it's just in the open position. I can turn it, but that's it. So. Heel down. these auctions they just have the keys uh, tied off the cable here so you can get in here and turn them on turn them off uh, make sure they run so if you're looking at bidding on them you can see what type of condition they are in um, that's just fun at prior lifetime I got to run some heavy equipment and it was some of the most fun I ever had so I enjoy coming to these auctions and just checking out the different equipment here and uh, you know I do toy with the idea of doing some sort of contracting uh, getting a small excavator, that's actually why I'm here. And yeah, this John Deere, this 153G. Probably a little bit older unit, probably early 2000s, I'd be guessing. Make sure the throttle's down. out there. It is a little wobbly because I have my blade up. So 
So you can feel the, I mean, this thing picks the back end right up. So having that blade down is a counterweight there. When you have that thing stuck out there all the way, there's a lot of bounce in this thing. Looks like I don't know what I'm doing. Well, that's part of it, but there is a little bit of a lag between when you put input into the controls and when this thing starts moving. So. And here they are in all their beauty. There's a bunch of these one ton gas powered little mini excavators directly from China. And they're all, all under a different type of name. There are the JF International, there's uh, Isis, however you pronounce that. Coda, everyone's put a different sticker on here and that's essentially what these are. They come from the same factory and they just put different stickers on them. And you could order them. If you go on Alibaba.com and you look up mini excavator, you can find exact style here and they'll put on whatever sticker that you want if you're looking to import one you may need to make sure it has a EPA certified engine these are all running these Briggs and Stratton's right here or well they have a sticker that says Briggs and Stratton who knows anymore if they're actually a true Briggs and Stratton motor and that's what gets them certified to run in the US and I believe Canada as well uh, EU has a little bit different regulations as far as diesels go, so you're not going to be able to get this in a diesel unless you spend the more, more money, go for a two-ton package, and get a uh, Kubota engine. So, but yeah, a little over 2,000 pounds, and the reviews on these are actually pretty darn good, um, tempting to say the least, because you know, if you get this for six or seven thousand dollars. I mean, you realize you're not buying a brand name machine, but for something that you can tinker with on the farm and low cost, and it'll do what you need it to. You're not expecting to do uh, work with it every day. You're not making a living using it. Just something to more have fun with. This is something to look into. Um, but any of your big auction sites will have these. Um, and this is Richard Brothers up in Chehalis, Washington, and they have a ton of these guys here. And, uh, yeah, remember, you get what you pay for, so you're planning on doing work to it. Just remember that. It's going to be questionable at best, the uh, quality control when these things come out of the factory. But as long as you keep that in mind and not afraid to turn some wrenches, you could probably get one of these and do some work around the, around the property with them. They're in various states of whether they'll start or not. This one's, let's see if this will start. Some of them have the batteries hooked up, some of them do not. But it's just a ignition, choke, lights, and then the battery switch over there. All very rudimentary controls, but you can fix them. That's the beauty of these things. There's no electronic controls on here, no computer systems. This is basically a, lawnmower motor hooked up to a hydraulic system and for reference that's my hand up against that bucket uh, width wise so uh, not a big machine by any st stretch of the imagination but if you want to have something to screw around with then yeah you're going to start seeing a lot more of these I think coming to the US I've seen some videos on YouTube about them and at this price point in auction you're going to have People like myself who will definitely give it a uh, good, uh, good hard thought because, I mean, who wouldn't want one of these? I mean, I live in suburbia and I have absolutely no use for one, but it looks fun. And this one was either A, not assembled correctly, or B, something catastrophic happened. I don't know. That's, that's odd. As far as how these get here, um, no one's been able to give me an answer. I think that somebody probably buys this by the container full. So you get a big 
intermodal container and you throw a whole bunch of these into it and probably get a discount from buying them from the manufacturer over there in China. They send it over here. I think you have to do a little bit of assembly because obviously canopy, that comes apart so it can be shipped easier. And they come on these pallets. This thing hasn't even rolled off the pallet yet. So they probably just pulled it out of the container, put the canopy on and placed it out here at auction. So, you know, you're getting brand new for, well, consider what brand new is for a $7,000 machine. Uh, manage your expectations on that one. But, yeah, this is uh, definitely something to toy around with for an idea. Here's some of the bigger equipment. This is a high track D8R. Has the pins here for, I believe this is what you put the crane on for your laying pipeline. So that you see the dozers that have the crane that sticks out the side so they can lay pipeline. I think that's what this was for. Like kind of a multi purpose machine. Not a small piece of equipment. See, there's some oil leaks there. It's an older model. I would be completely guessing if I tried to give you any sort of idea of how old these things are. I kind of base it off how much rust there is and the color of the paint and if it looks like the other old things I've ran in my lifetime. So, let's fire this thing up. So, operator station seen better days. steer this is this steers it that direction pull it back and it steers it that direction you twist it to go forward pull it to back to go back and this might be speed control here on the very tip I don't know um, all the instructions have worn off so and there's your uh, I think that's your throttle control I did I had it in downward position so it should have been giving me more throttle for some reason it wasn't de-accelerator and then brake so simple machine but you can do a lot of work with it and the uh, hydraulics are not computer controlled so I was able to drop that blade without the uh, key being on so it's just old school older technology which you now sometimes better the less, uh, less, less electronics you have the uh, more likely you are to have less trouble. May not be as efficient, but sometimes simpler is better. Whew, that old girl's clapped out. That is a very, very sad looking track right there. Definitely use some tension. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this thing sat for a long time before they loaded it up and brought it here to the auction yard. It's missing part of the scraper blade. Yeah, that thing hasn't run in forever. That's a, it's a very tired machine. 
I'm assuming that looks like either, it looks like one point would have been the metal spring out of a bed uh, mattress. So maybe this thing was a junkyard machine. Compacted trash for a junkyard. Who knows? But either way, it's tired. Not everything at the auction is junk, but all the junk's at the auction. So you gotta be very, uh, very careful when you're buying stuff from these places. Do your due diligence. Get a little D6T. There's a forestry equipment there. Old school loader. High lifts or high reach booms. It's kind of funny. This video that you're watching right now is being recorded on a Samsung smartphone. Don't make anything. Those tires have seen some better days. 966, 980. One of my first jobs ever was going to run a really old school 980. It was a 988. I'm probably mistaken on that, what the exact number was, but it was the size of a loader. Open cab, early 60s. But for a 16 year old, that was the coolest thing ever. And that is a, that's a clapped out bucket. So you can see the inner skin right there. Completely gone, it's fractured. Those things could have been in a gravel pit, who knows. Here's a big rig. It's a 460E John Deere. Mining trucks. So you'll see this on like the shows of uh, gold miners up in Alaska and the Yukon. Articulated truck. I do apologize again if the wind is causing horrible sound here. I'm trying to block as best I can. That's a little bit newer model and the cabin, these things are actually pretty nice. So pretty spacious. You got your buddy seat right here. So bring your friend along. You want to turn it on. First click, that's starting everything up. Got your radio here, rear camera. Good habit to do when you're at these auctions is um, uh, do a walk around of the vehicle. So, what I mean by that is just make sure no one's standing underneath of it because there's no regulation. I mean, people can walk in here and just start messing with equipment, and if you have someone standing next to you, you don't know it's there. You could run them over real easily just by hopping in here, hitting the start button, and off you go. Hydrocarbon cleaning active. Okay, this must have the. Yeah, this has a diff machine. So, the way you drive these is parking brake off, foot's on the brake. Hit forward. Brake works. Let's try to reverse. Have our camera there. Bed dump here, a little lever there. And that's pretty fast. I'm not gonna dump it all the way because I don't want a bunch of water or other junk coming down out of it. And it lowers rather slowly. Huh. Cool piece of equipment. I'm wondering how, uh, what year this is. 
I'm going to shut it off. So, I don't know as if I'd want to spend 12 hours a day in one of these, but it's better than the water stuff I've given. And of course they have the biggest machine parked up by the road so everyone can see as you drive by. So people like myself get distracted and stop in and look at it. So it's a high reach demolition excavator. So this is designed for tearing down buildings or just reaching up and anywhere you need to get a bucket or a tool. I believe that this is done by the factory that Belco makes these. So, we'll walk around here. One thing I didn't realize until I watched some videos on it, a lot of these counterweights are filled with rock or concrete. They're not, uh, they're not just solid steel or cast steel. They put all sorts of heavy stuff in there and then weld them shut. So your cab tilts. That's quite the uh, quite the angle there. So. There's our tilt mechanism. There's two hydraulic cylinders. It's actually got a pretty narrow footprint. It's not as uh, not as wide as I expect. So. Let's crawl up there. So for this one, for obvious reasons, they pulled the key out because I don't want clowns like myself hopping in here and running around, but yeah. You have a very leaned back view on this thing. So that's your view. I feel like I'm in a space shuttle about to take off. But all similar controls. Here's the other side of the auction. Just rows and rows of semi trucks, over the road trucks, day cabs, here, bucket trucks, a whole bunch of old decommissioned rider trucks. Couple cranes, you get into the trailers. It's a cool thing about these auctions, is there's just everything here. Old ambulance down there. And if you can think of it, they have it here. Oh, that's a beaut, Clark. Figure out what those weights are for. Well, that's old school right there. Old American crane. Let's see if we can get in here. And... So remember, I was saying those operator cabs have gotten plush over the years. Well, this is what they had to deal with back in the day. So there's the drum housing right there for one of your spools. That's your engine all the way back there. So that is probably louder than heck in here. Air controls. I'm guessing air controls, but I don't have a ton of experience with cranes, and so yeah, that does not look uh, does not look like a fun place to spend a 12 hour day. see what that is. A, maybe a Detroit, but I don't know. A three, 351 maybe, or a 471. 
I can't really see, so the camera's getting a better angle than I am. But anyway, it's gonna be loud because there's your seat right there. You got those drums humming away, and then you got this motor back here just screaming. When it's hot out, you open this door so the radiator can breathe, and once you're done for the day, you close the radiator door. There's your cables that go back to your counterweight. Odd geometry there. And there are your two boom sections that go with it. That's what the view I wanted these to look like. Sitting in this all day. Not particularly comfortable. We have a big old Komatsu long reach excavator with a jewel arm on it. I'm not sure if that jewel is still in, around or if they went out of business. I know that they made a lot of uh, equipment for logging, for retrofitting excavators and such. God, that thing is big. just massive. My, my hand on the browser pads, I mean that's... Well, they could probably go for having the tracks tightened a little bit. Sure there's a battery disconnect around here. Depending on the manufacturers, some put it in the cab, some put it in the back. There's your hydraulic blocks. Hydraulic tank, fuel tank over there. And a very stiff door. Now these hinges are rusted. I don't want to bend the door. There's the inside of the engine compartment. There's a three pump system. Top one, and a middle one, third. There's some old iron right there. Old school cranes right here. Uh, 
Well, I lived up in Seattle, I know that much. They've cleared off who made it or owned it. There's a grove. There, the counter waits for it. I'm assuming that American counterweight goes to this one over here. No clue on the age of these. FMC. Cool machines out here. So here's another relic. It's an old link belt. I believe this is a cable log loader. I guess that's what it appears looks like. As far as age, your guess is as good as mine. The open style sprocket back here for your drive and your chain drive. There's your motor right there. Let's see what brand that is. I don't know if this is a, it's probably aftermarket customization, 4x4, cut down in there to support the radiator. Battery soaked in oil. Yeah, this thing is old and probably pretty tired. I'm going to pause this video so I can climb up there. Alright, here is the cab. So you can see it's a little ways down here. That's your control box here. It's a view that the operator would have. I'm not sure if there's ever a panel that went here that would keep your arms or your piece of your shirt from getting sucked into the uh, braking net mechanism. So that is how your drums break. This engages this piston right here which presses on these brake pads which keeps your uh, spool from free spooling. And when you're sitting here that is inches away from where your elbow would be. And right back here you have this door that takes you to your engine compartment and more drums. And on the side here you have all the nuts and bolts and whatever else falls off of this thing as you're driving it. Who knows when the age of this thing is but this is old. This is really old. Looks like a throttle control down there, maybe. Can't imagine what it would be like to drive this when I was new and thinking this was the cat's meow. So, this is a Logmaster LS980 TL FMC. Now to Iowa, there's nothing here that's telling me the, uh, the date of this. Yeah, so your guess is as good as mine on these. You know back in the day these were the primary way they moved logs onto log trucks, but 
then hydraulics came in and a little bit safer, more efficient. But God, these things are cool. Wouldn't want to run one. Wouldn't want to be in it all day, but God, they're cool to look at.